everybody. This is Rafael Bracero for MetalPR.com, and here we are with the great Mila from the Mighty Creator, who finally is going to be playing Puerto Rico tonight. First of all, Mila, thanks a lot for coming down to Puerto Rico. We are really honored to have you after 30 years of career without playing Puerto Rico. How do you feel about it? You're great. Um, we heard a lot about it, you know. Every time we played in uh, Florida, a lot of people from Puerto Rico came over. And they said that it's a nice metal scene here. We'll see tonight. Music-wise, have you heard anything else about Puerto Rico before you getting in here tonight? Oh, we, we posted something on our website today um, that we come here, that we play. So a lot of some of the comments were, oh, in Puerto Rico there's only merengue and reggae. And we're like, ah. And I know some, some other fans were like, no, it's all full of metal. You wait and see and fuck you. And So I... I, I, I um, I think metal is everywhere, you know. Absolutely, it's like a universal thing, basically. Uh, like we were talking off the air, we just have the chance to watch you playing along with Asep last year. So now you were playing with Overkill. Yes. What would you say is the main difference uh, with, uh, within the, the two tours? I think um, Overkill and Creative, the match was better. You know, even though we love except and they're nice guys and we had a great time um, the audience was a little divided you know some of the fans that that came for except knew they hit balls to the wall and and some of the you know and weren't really familiar with creator sometimes which was good in a way and then in the other on the other hand sometimes it was not so good so it depended you know I mean from city to city it was different with overkill it was always very equal so um, and very 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 smooth you know it's like it's the same fans but more you know what I mean all the people came out so it was great what is really interesting is, and that night I, I have you know I appreciate a lot of youngsters enjoying more your music than a set I mean yeah. so you were more like appealing to the younger fans yeah. than maybe a set yeah yeah that's true that's true um, like I said except they are a great band and their last Absolutely. two albums were great you know and um, maybe they have some they got, they've gotten some younger kids when they played with us hopefully and um, I think you know it doesn't matter how old people I mean no, the age doesn't really matter um, I think uh, the kids can get into Accept you know it's a great band and just as much as they can get into Creator you know of course we play more extreme music but I think metal has so many different um, faces that there's room for in my metal collection there would be room for creator and except you know what I mean you have been around for almost 30 years or so so after all this time what would you say is the best the best thing you have ever witnessed in the metal scene and, and the worst the best thing is the audience every day you know every day we play it's it's uh, it's always great we, we there's so much enthusiasm and we can give so much back to the to our fans. You know, we get some great letters from people that that um, our music helped to a difficult time. I just got that one guy in um, in San Antonio. He had told me he almost killed himself, but then he heard Come Off Souls album and he decided not to kill himself. Really? Yeah. He That's to me. totally the opposite of what people say about heavy metal. Exactly. <laughs> exactly. Exactly. It gives you power. It gives you strength. It's my opinion. Um, on the other hand. Of course, the the haters and, and uh, the people from the outside, they think, of course, if there's a school massacre or something, or somebody's, run, um, somebody's like running amok or whatever, um, it's always, they always uh, zip to the record collection and find the one metal record, and then it's like, oh, so-and-so uh, uh, ran amok because of the... Slipknot record that he had in his collection, you know, it's, it's total bullshit. Absolutely. So, after all these years, is there still something that concerns you about the metal scene? Something that that you still think has to be improved? That's a tough one. I think um, the metal scene is very open-minded. Sometimes, um, sometimes, a, sometimes a little too open-minded because. Um, you know, how do I put this? Sometimes 
when you, you when you're at a metal festival, let's say Wacken, you have like all kinds of weird genre uh, bands there that are not even metal, mm -hmm. but they are still liking it. And I'm like, to me, metal's metal, right? I'm not cons conservative when it comes to music. I listen to all kinds of music, but I have a certain. To me, there's metal has to has to have a certain feel and has to make make me feel a certain thing. And there's some bands, in my opinion, that are pop bands with heavy guitars, mm -hmm. and that's to me that's not metal. It's 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 heavier pop. But if I want to listen to pop, I listen to real pop okay. because uh, that's that's just my opinion. But um, like I said. It's it has room for everything, you know. I'm just 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 my my personal taste. In my opinion, metal should cross boundaries and shouldn't conform. And in my, um, sometimes those, these bands, you know, like the two poppy metal bands, they're like pop with heavy guitars, and that's conforming to the masses. In my opinion, funny you should say that because everybody knows that Creator has some different experimental phase back in the day, but. It seems normal to uh, uh, almost every band to do that from time to time. Have you thought of going back to experiment? Yeah. Um, we do that on every record that we we've put out since 2001. The thing with the exper so-called ex experimental um, period of Creator was that we had like dogmas on every album. You know, like for example, Outcast. We wanted to do an album with three-minute songs and no, not so many lead guitars, no solos. That was our dogma. Then we had. Um, Anorama, the dogma was be as melodic as possible. And uh, I love that album. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And um, for renewal, we had the dogma to just break away from what we've done before and do something completely different. So we want to, we don't have that anymore because we can pick from all these from our back catalog, you know, and write songs. We could write a song that could be easily could be on on uh, Anorama, for example, the song that was on. There was one song that's on, on, on the Enemy of God album. It's called um, Voices of the Dead. In my opinion, that is the song that could have been on Anurama. But nobody was complaining about it because it was an Enemy of God, you know. And uh, on the new album also, there's, um, there's a song called uh, You're Having My Hell. In my opinion, typical Anurama song. Also, uh, on your career, you have seen a lot of bandmates coming and going. Uh, some even have gone out completely of the music industry. What would you say is the probably the main reason why they left? I mean, it's like I know this business is not that easy. So, so for all the people, especially young bands trying to, you know, to, to go to the, to the top, what would you say is, is the main problem of people who probably doesn't know how this runs and and ended up, you know, quitting? You want to hear my honest opinion? Yeah. You have to commit your life. Otherwise, it's not going to work. Um, and people are... A lot of the musicians are like, okay, I tried this for five years and if it doesn't work, if, it doesn't, if I don't make as much money as my neighbor, who's a lawyer, and he has a big car, and I want that too, then you're wrong. Then that's, that's, this is the wrong, uh, the wrong choice for you. For, you know, music is a business, yes, but you should be compassionate, and you should be... You should, sacrifice a lot of things you know like in the in the first years of when i when i've done this i was still living with my parents and i was i i never made any compromises when it came to financial things because i never needed much if i didn't have much i didn't spend much a lot of people are not willing to do that they think the material um wealth is the most important thing and, and that to me can cause a lot of conflicts um because all of a sudden you're 30 and you still don't have that big house And then you're like, uh, I split up the band and become a lawyer or become a, a business, whatever, um, broker or whatever. And which is fine, you know. But then come, don't come back after 10 years and pretend you're still feeling it because you don't. You, you, you stop feeling it, you know. That's my opinion. I, I, and I love it, believe me. So you also have shared a lot of stages with younger bands. Uh, I bet some of them have come to you asking for advices. What would you say to them? But besides what you already, you know, told us. Just, just, the thing is, I had a, a great conversation with a friend of mine. He's, a, he's a, a big artist in Germany. And he just told me you have to believe in, in the, how, 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 what did I say? Uh, you have to stop being realistic. So if you really believe in what you do, you can do it. 
It's it's not this it's not this American dream kind of thing, you know. That not that bullshit. It's just the it's just that um, in my opinion, if you don't believe in yourself, no one else will. And if you if you if there's like the slightest doubt, you can you, you people will know, you know. If you if you still have a plan already have a plan B in your in the back of your mind, you won't it won't help your creativity. Cool. So after all these years, if you will have the chance to record a rec to do, do a record completely totally out of the metal genre what genre do you will you choose music uh, to me there's no genre I, I don't think in genres to me music is music um, I w might do an album without heavy guitars maybe or I'll do an album uh, you know I like electronic music a lot you know and uh, I like mellow stuff I like um I like trippy wave stuff, you know. I, I'm, I'm a big fan of uh, pop music also. Maybe I would do that. But, you know, I'm a creator. <laughs> so, actually, you have passed, like, the, for the past two years you have been touring. So, it's obvious the next question. Is there any new material written already? No. <laughs> no? <laughs> no time for that? Not yet. I mean, look at this. We're still, um, we're still touring and we will continue in the next year. What would you like to accomplish be, before you maybe die. call it quit? Before, <laughs> before you die, maybe. no, that's not really. I, but that's what I quit. Uh, I won't quit before I die. I mean, it's to me, it's this is just music, metal. If you really take care of yourself, can be the next thing. You know, I, I, to me, artists that I really respect is like one artist is really um, is Iggy Pop. He's almost 70 and you can't see it. It's he's still like yeah. crushing. He's you know, hard, yeah. he's sitting hard and. Um, That's how I want to be when I'm 70. And I, I, I'll still be around, don't worry. Um, and I achieved a lot, you know. I mean, I travel the world, I, I play in all kinds of places, big or small, doesn't matter. And, um, and uh, I'm happy. And um, I have achieved a lot, uh, uh, enough to say that I don't have... I mean, everything that comes now is a bonus to me. You know, if, if maybe we play, I don't know, play a big tour in America on a major tour whatever that would be a bonus to me but um, I'm happy I'm, I, I don't need to achieve anything uh, to me I, I know that when this band is over or when I die or something there's a couple of people that still remember it for a little while you know as long as metal is being remembered we, we'll be a part of it definitely we have seen a lot of uh, creator playing in big festivals in Europe South America Asia Japan you recently play in China yeah. but For some reason, we haven't seen Creator playing a big festival in the United States. At least not the United States has the best festivals, yeah. or maybe the, the most the, yeah. you know, festivals. But do you have an idea why, why Creator haven't played? You want my, you want my honest answer? Absolutely. It's uh, politics. Politics, business. We're a German band. You know, you're, um, it's not that because we're from Germany, it's, you know, be getting into those are we still facing that I mean we're in the 2000s no 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 no, no we're not facing it's not, it's not about politics in the sense of okay I know. Uh, you know not that kind of politics politics business politics okay. so um, there's let me put it this way there will always be a new hip band that takes a place that creator would play uh, take on a big festival on a traveling festival uh, rather than creator you know so there will be the next I just you know mentioned one name not not that I don't uh, let's say the next I don't want to say I don't want to say anything about bad about any other band but there will be the next um, some hip band from Hollywood or whatever or some hip band from wherever with you know the next new metal trend genre or whatever and you know don't uh, don't you think here. that the United States tends to glamorize everything i mean it's like the, i mean this is my honest opinion i mean i love a lot of us bands oh, you know yeah. trash metal death metal yeah, yeah. you may name it but i always say that the united states the metal scene uh, the music industry tried always to glamorize thing i mean you a uh, music uh, uh, record industry you know sign you up when you're playing trash yeah. and the next thing they giving you an advice to make a ballad or yeah, something yeah, like yeah, that yeah, yeah. so if you want a metal band or a trash band to do a ballad yeah. why don't you sing a pop single yeah, yeah, yeah that's but that's the thing i mean the fans in the u.s are totally different the business is what 
really sucks sometimes. You know, the metal fans are just as much um, true, just as true, or just as dedicated as the metal fans in South America, in in uh, Europe, in every place of the world. The real true metal fans, but. Um, I don't know. Yeah, maybe we didn't play the game. I don't know. You, you even were once in, in Epic, uh, you know, a, a subsidiary from from Sony. How was the experience, you know, compared to to Nuclear Blast, SPV? Uh, I, I tell you one thing. I will tell you one thing about the Epic era. Um, we did extreme aggressions on Epic, right? And it did well. It did great. But then uh, I think it was right before Grunge came or something, and there was some, there was some. They were they had this plan on dropping a couple of bands. So when our second album. Uh, our fifth album came out yeah. they put out an ad in the, in the magazine creator put out, just put out their second album it was already our fifth album you know what I mean that's how epic yeah. perceived creator they were like oh this is German band I have to be honest when, when Extreme Aggression came out I was kind of disappointed b before I listened to it because of the cover it was like Oh no, they're on Sony, they already dropped the, yeah, you know, the, the artwork yeah. and they're putting a, a photo. Yeah. But I have to say, that's one of the best albums that you, yeah, you ever had. Yeah, yeah. But a lot of people thought about that. It's like, maybe they are, you know, it's, it's yeah. get, taking it slow right yeah. now, but it was the totally opposite. Yeah. I mean, it was a great. I like it even more than Terrible Satan. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, the cover was a different story. I mean, back in the day, it was a big thing to. You know, create a cover, and we had a deadline. So we had a cover, and we didn't like it. So we had to put a photo in it. It was a, it was, it was last, a last minute thing. And at the end of the day, I was okay with it. You know, even though I like the, I like the consistency. You know, I like Iron Maiden would have never had Iron Maiden on yeah. the cover. You know, <laughs> <laughs> you already had a mask. Yeah, 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 yeah. So, so. You're getting ready to play tonight in Puerto Rico for the first time. Hope this is not going to be the last, but any last word to all the people that are watching on Will Be Bashing? Peace. Uh, we'll, we're, we're, I mean, I'm, I, I'm really, you know, we're really happy to play here because we heard a lot of, about it and uh, it's one of the places we haven't played yet and it's great to discover new places and I hope this uh, uh, concert will be good and thanks for all the support. Thanks to you, uh, as I tell, as I said you before, we are truly honored to have one of the great thrash metal legends of all time, the great Mila from Creator. So, see you next time in metalpr.com. Thank you so much.